You should train the handstand. Seriously, it's like the second best exercise. And in this video, I'm going to convince you why. But first, let's define what a handstand is. Well, I hope you know this, but the handstand is when you stand on your hands. That's the name. But to be more precise, the handstand dates back to 1976. I completely made that up, but then I hopped into a rabbit hole and it turns out that handstands have captivated audiences for centuries. The earliest recorded instance takes us back to over 2,500 years ago, to ancient civilizations where balancing on hands was not just for show, but also a test of strength and agility. Ranging from the regions of ancient China to ancient Greece, handstands were more than athletic feats. They were integral to cultural expression at public gatherings, religious ceremonies, parties. These practices highlighted the skill and discipline of performance who were often part of elaborate celebrations. And continuing to the modern day, it continues to stand. It's been around for a while, and holding yourself up on your hands offers a multitude of benefits, serving as a full body workout that enhances your upper body strength, core stability, and cardiovascular health. Engaging the shoulders, arms, chest, and core, this upside down pose improves physical strength and balance. Additionally, the focus required to maintain a handstand promotes mental clarity and reduces stress. Some say it might just be the next meditation, making it a powerful exercise for mind and body. So I've been practicing the handstand for the past two years, and in that time, I've gotten a little bit better at it. I've even been able to move to some more difficult variations. But before you can do those, you gotta learn the handstand. And I think since not that many people train it, that people look at it as it's a hard exercise to obtain. But if you're relatively athletic, you can get there if you just work on it consistently. You can't let your brain trick you. My brain would give me all these excuses. I told myself that I genetically couldn't do it. It's exhausting, I'm tired, and I don't know if I can do the handstand. I don't know if I got it in my genes. That's what I'm thinking. I'm still gonna just, you know, run at the brick wall, but it's a little bit discouraging because I've been doing this for like, I've been doing this for like 60 days now and I got nothing to show for it. Yeah, I was pretty discouraged. I just didn't think I had the chops for it. I will say my doubts were valid. It's not often that you see someone walking upside down or holding that handstand position. And when you learn this, one of the things you have to get over is the lack of belief in yourself when you're trying to train for it. When I was starting out, I had been putting in a little bit of work. It, it was about three weeks in. I saw all these people online learning it in seven days. So I was a little bit frustrated that I wasn't able to learn it faster. Surprisingly, that was my favorite part about learning the handstand was how it showed me that I can do more than I think and that by showing up every single day, you can overcome these challenges and setbacks that come in your path and eventually learn something pretty cool. So that's step one is just consistency and learning how to balance. And you can do that by using the lower progressions like the frog pose or just going up against a wall. As long as you have the strength to hold yourself upside down, you can kick up onto a wall. And if you can just get into that position on the wall, eventually you're gonna learn to find that spot. And as you go on, you just try to progress and you try to move away from the wall as much as possible. And you'll notice that you'll start to see progress and it's gonna be pretty rewarding as you get like a little five second hold or a 10 second hold. That's why I also think you should be practicing the standalone handstand, just trying to see how long you can do it. When I started learning it, one, I, I just kind of self-taught myself. I didn't have anyone guiding my feet, getting me in that position. I just had a wall and the skin on my back. I was like my pops. When I walked to school, I had to go 15 miles uphill, fight a bear and carry my books at the same time. <laughs> just the way it was. Eventually you get there and then you start doing some cooler things and it starts to click more and more and you're able to build off of all that hard work that you had in the past. So if you just keep showing up, like I said before, which is such a stupid thing. So the more we can be upside down, the more we can do cooler stuff upside down. It's kind of what I'm coming to realize. And it's cool because once you hit that, if you train the handstand, you know what I'm talking about, but you like kind of get into this little levitation position where you're you're in that balance point and your chakras are aligned and once I hit that for the first time I was like whoa I can do this and then I just started doing it everywhere I went crazy uh, I could only hold it for five seconds and most of the time I would fall but grocery stores I even gave myself a rule every time I got out of my car, I would pop into a handstand. And the more time I spent in the upside down, the better I got. It's a challenging exercise to go after, which I think makes it more of a worthwhile goal compared to, you know, oh, I just wanna get a six pack or I just wanna pump some iron, I don't know. Don't get me wrong, I like both of those things too, but I feel like the handstand just has a little bit more substance, you know? It's challenging, it's worth going after, and it shows you what you're made of. And when you feel that balance point, you know, you're holding yourself in that position, all the hard work, all those failed attempts, and all the challenges that you ran into are finally gonna pay off. 
I started training this two years ago. And before that, my friends would always make fun of me because I'd always go through these phases. They'd be like, oh, Colin's going through another phase again, where I'd get super invested into one thing. And I would just pour all of myself into it and get super obsessed for about three weeks and then just never do it again. <laughs> because of this, I have the most random skills in the world. One of them's pen spinning. I have a weird knowledge about bees, a lot of weird stuff. But when I started doing calisthenics, I don't know if it was because there's just always something else to learn or because I just liked the process and was intrinsically motivated or something. But it was like one of the few things I've actually stuck with for a longer period of time. And you can include weights in that as well because you're able to see yourself grow. And I just think that having that progress is like the best thing in the world. I don't know, but I think it's, there's something really special when you can just stick with something for a, a long period of time and, and get good at it. And I might have, I've said this a bunch on my channel, but when you suck at something, it's not fun to do. So you have to just go through that first stage of being bad at it. And the better you get, the more fun it is. And the more progress you see, the more you want to do it. And when you do have those lapses and motivation, if you can just stick with it, I think, I think that's when you can start to see yourself do some pretty cool things. And I think that's pretty neat. And off the handstand, we can spin off and start learning some cooler things. It's really a fundamental pillar that can branch off into cooler things. For instance, you can start making shapes. You can start lowering into something, whether that be a croc, or a 90 degree hold, even a planche if you got that in your bag. Essentially, once you can pop into a handstand, it doesn't stop and the world is not your oyster as you can go on to move to whatever your heart desires. But the thing about the handstand is once you get past the sucky part of falling over again and again, eventually you can hold that handstand and it's just a fun exercise. You go to the gym and train it because it's fun to train. It's fun to blast some music and pop into handstands. I think that alone is beautiful. And aside from it, you know, teaching you to believe in yourself, and be consistent and patient. It's also something that once you get it down, it's just something you like want to do. It's one of the things in my life personally that I do just for the fun of it and not because I really like want some other outcome. And if you can just get past the sucky part of failing and not being able to do the exercise, eventually you'll hit that balance point and the world will be your oyster. So I welcome you to learn the handstand with me. Seriously, because I'm not the only dude at my gym that trains it. <laughs>